Hola senors, today I'm going to show you how to install the Monster Deluxe drive shafts into an AR60 axle. If you take a look at these axle shafts, you will see there's a significant difference in size. So, the problem is, is that the housing will take these tiny shafts, but not so much these. So we're not talking a huge difference here. Uh, I believe I just measured the, the inside of these tubes come out at like uh, .264 diameter. Um, these shafts are .277. So we're barely opening up the insides uh, to fit these shafts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something I've never done before, which is I'm going to modify this axle housing with regular drill bits and a hand drill. Uh, what I usually do is I just modify them on my lathe, which makes it pretty easy. But I figured if I'm going to show you guys and I'm going to expect you guys to do this with a hand drill, I might as well do it today. So I'm going to install these front shafts, and then since it's basically the same thing, I'm also going to install the rear shafts. Rear shafts are the same deal. So you got these big shafts, and then you got a st uh, stock size shaft here. There's a big difference. Okay, so let's get started. So what you're going to need, other than the obvious, you know, you're going to need your AR60 axle, um, and then you're going to need the, the axle shafts, the deluxe axle shafts. Other than that, the only thing you should need is a drill, and then a couple drill bits. So if you're working on cars yourself, you should have a drill index. Um, hex drivers, drill index, I consider those to be the bare minimums that you would need. So you can get an index like this, where it's going to have a bunch of drill bits. For RC stuff, it's even nicer to have the smaller numbers. I just looked on Harbor Freight. There's no excuse not to have a drill index. You can get a 115-piece drill index for $35, I think, uh, Harbor Freight. And uh, you know you can take your twenty percent coupon, what they always have in there. So you're looking, you're looking at under thirty bucks for a full drill index. So, like I said, there's there's no reason not to own one of those. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna we're gonna drill one hole at a time. So we're gonna start out with the smallest hole, the smallest drill bit, uh, and then we're gonna drill all the way through. And the reason we're gonna do this is because if you if you already have a hole like this and you just go whole hog to the biggest drill bit you got, you're probably going to put too much pressure on it you know, to have problems. And your drill bit, you'll be drilling down the center, but it's going to walk. And by the time you get to here, it's going to be a little bit off center. So if you drill a hole that's good enough for these shafts and it still doesn't line up, probably because you went off center. So by using a smallest drill bit to the biggest drill bit, it just allows that pilot to go in there. See that one kind of goes in already, so it's just going to clean it up. So it's going to allow just a nice pilot, and you're just going to be shaving little parts off rather than just going in there and making your own hole. So hopefully that makes sense. So what we're going to do here, the drill bit sizes. So we're going to start out at 17 64ths, which is going to be a 265 number. Hopefully you know your numbers. It probably just confused me if you don't. So we have 265, which is probably the same as the inner diameter there, but we're just going to run it just to make sure. And then we're going to do a 932nd. So the 932nd is going to be a 281. So these shafts are a 277. So that's only uh, four thousandths bigger than the actual axle shaft. So if you're right on, then you're going to be fine. But chances are you and even I am not going to be right on so we're going to finish that up with a 1964 which is a 269 uh, I'm sorry yeah it's a, it's a 296 that's what it is a 296 so it's a, a little bit bigger than those shafts which isn't much uh, if you don't know what numbers I'm talking about so 265 is about there so and then 2 277 is about there 296 is about there so the distance we're opening this up will be what 30 
31 thousandths, I believe. So, can you see that? That's how much we're going to be drilling this axle to. That little tiny amount. And then these, these axle shafts will fit. So you don't have to worry about strength. Um, shouldn't really have to worry about hardcore drilling, anything like that. This should be a straightforward, uh, simple modification. We'll see. Like I say, this is the first time I've ever used a hand drill. So we're going to take this, uh, this is a 1764. We'll chuck that up. And let's see, the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure your locker's not in the way. So if you're running your stock locker, you want to take that out. And the, uh, the deluxe shafts, they come with a locker, and they'll come with the axle shafts also. And they also come with a ring gear. So if you think the axle shafts are really expensive, you gotta you gotta take in consideration all the stuff it's coming with. It usually comes with like bearings, um, you know, like say the, the ring gear, um, the locker. So I mean, you know, locker you're looking at thirty bucks, uh, ring gear you're looking at thirty five bucks, so you're sixty bucks, seventy bucks into just what I'm holding here in my hands. Uh, and these shafts, those shafts are about one hundred and sixty. These shafts are like one hundred and twenty five. So this thing's only like sixty bucks for these shafts, which is pretty good deal and you get hubs with those too so not a, not a bad deal but they sound like they're bad okay and then so one other one other disclaimer I'll put on here is uh, you got all these screws so you got screws for the chubs uh, well you got screws probably for your link mounts so be be careful here you don't want to drill those screws out if those screws catch the the drill bit it's not gonna be a good time so let's just back those out for now or take them out might be easier I don't have the link mounts in so I won't mess with those okay so all my screws should be out of the way so let's see what happens all right Okay, so there's my 1764. See, it's really easy. You gotta, you gotta make sure your uh, your drill is gonna be long enough. So make it as long as you can in your drill. You can see I'm not gonna quite make it. I gotta, I gotta take this chub off. No big deal. So once you get into your longer drill bits might reach no that one's not going to reach so we would have had to take that off anyway okay I should be able to get to it now almost so I'm just going to let that be it doesn't quite get there but uh, these longer drill bits will get it there for me Okay, now we're going to move on to the 9.30 seconds. It's probably even better if you use a vise, but I'm not going to use a vise. Just so I can show you guys you can do this with the hands. Okay, so there's the 9.30 seconds. Let's see if I can get this other side through with that drill bit.
didn't quite make it with that drill bit either. So close, so close. Let's see if I can actually get just a hair more out of it because I want to see if I have enough clearance with this 932nd bit. Yeah, I made it. So hopefully your, your 932nd drill bit is long enough. Don't forget to get all your shavings out. So what I'm going to do, so I'm just going to install this real quick. Let's see if my 932nd's made it. Uh, I can say that's really tight. It uh, gives you about four thousandths, which is about a human hair. I don't think you're going to be able to see it on the... Um, I don't think you're able to see four thousandths on this caliper, but... Well... So there's four thousandths. That's how much clearance you have in those tubes right now. So you have to be pretty accurate, to say the least. Well, let's see how accurate I was. It worked. I actually hope I screwed it up just so I could show you the next drill size. Fortunately, I don't think it did. Like I said, if you if you just step them up from the the smallest drill that you can to the largest drill, you're probably going to be pretty accurate. I mean, you can see I didn't use a vise. I mean, I was using my hands and I was trying to take it out of my hands and just grabbing and hard and there was nothing precise about that. I think maybe I was just a hair off because they're not smoothly going in and they should smoothly go in this uh, on this side here of this locker this side should smoothly go in nice and easy this side over here since it has such a deep uh, tank slot it's going to be a little bit more stubborn so just be prepared for that um, no matter how you had good you drill this tube it might just need to be tapped in with a hammer. And there ain't nothing wrong with that. A nice tight fit. If it weren't for uh, people complaining, I would make them both with a hammer tight fit. If I make if I make something for my cars, I will typically make them with a hammer tight fit. So if I make a shaft that goes in these lockers. I make it so I hammer it literally because then it doesn't doesn't wear out. Oh yeah, see those those tubes probably are fine. Cause that's just a good tight fit. Perfect fit. So actually I'm not gonna drill it. I think I got them right on. Yeah. So we're gonna put this back in. We're just going to tap them in, and uh, like I said, don't be don't be scared of that fit. Just because they don't they don't go in perfectly, it's it's not a, it's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's a really good thing. Because if you take a shaft and it just slides in there, if you just slide in there and like, wow, that fits really good. Well, what happens when you're going to drive on it is it's going to wear. Everything wears out, and so now that thing that was what you'd consider a perfect fit. It's now sloppy. So what's going to happen here is you're going to have this too tight a fit, one that you got to hammer in, and it's going to it's going to wear. Like I just said, everything does. It's going to wear, and it's actually going to become uh, a perfect fit. I mean, you'll probably be able to drive on it for you know so many battery packs, and then you'll be able to take it and you'll be able to slide it in with a perfect fit. One of my biggest challenges uh, explaining to people is you don't want you don't want things with what you consider a nice, just good feeling fit. You don't want that. You want everything to be too tight because everything will wear and then it'll be perfect fit. I just screwed this up. I forgot to put my pinion in. I 
Okay, walkers in. So we'll put this guy in. Okay, those are in. Uh, yeah, it doesn't, that doesn't take much. That's what I can consider a perfect fit. Oh, hopefully I didn't forget something here. Grab the toe. Yeah, that's just a good fit. Um, one other thing you got to be really careful of is you backed all these screws out. So now we got to put these screws in. And these screws could be too long now. So keep that in mind. So we're going to put these screws back in. So for these, I believe I had a 5 mil. So just put the, put the screw in and then check it. Good. So don't worry about these screws. They're going to be the right length. 5 mil, like I said. If you're doing a 6 mil screw, like it might come equipped with, um, it might be too long now. Okay, so those screws are good. Um, let's see, I need these ones. If you're using a deluxe truss, these come as 10. I'm going to have to back it out to 8. Yeah, I don't know. That one's fine. Thought it was gonna stick. You gotta be careful when you're doing these universals, because though if you go sideways like this, like you can bind them. If you see that, you can bind them on the chub. You'll think it was a screw, but it's not. And all these could vary from car to car. Um, just because I'm putting these screws in, you know, tolerances change on everything. So if I put a, a 5 in, yours might not work with 5. But 5 mil is going to be the way to go. Okay, so I'm not going to finish installing these because I don't have all the link mounts. <coughs> so you're looking at 5 mil on the link mounts. Uh, what do we do? 5, 8, 5. So get yourself a couple 5s because they're kind of weird to come by. Um, not super common. We'll be good, and then we'll throw the knuckles on. Okay, so I actually had to go tap this in uh, with a rubber mallet. This is the, the short side of that locker I was telling you about. So it gets really tight in here, um, tighter than this other side. So I couldn't tap it into the Leatherman or with the table, so I actually had to use a rubber mallet. So uh, it tells you how hard it is still, not really. So that's pretty much how that goes. I mean, you're still going to have to, you know, grease your ring and pinion, put the diff cover on, uh, hook up your steering. Um, I'll just show you real quick. So if you're running, if you're running like an eight millimeter hub now, which everybody's scared of too, you can just put the hubs on like that, put the pin through, put that in, and then you bolt your wheel on. That's how easy these hubs are. So if you're scared of this mod, especially, I mean, you just saw, no, saw me do the front axle, and I don't know what the time will be on that, 10, 15 minutes, uh, using a hand drill, just drill bits and a hand drill. That's all you need for tools. It's super easy. So that's the front end. Uh, if this is a rear end, I'm going to show you this is going to be pretty much just as easy, if not easier. So I'm only going to do one side. I'm sure you can get the, the idea from me doing one side. But if you back it up, back it up, um, all you gotta do is just install the hold on, I can't I can't think and talk at the same time apparently. Okay, so if you're, doing, if you're doing the rear end now, all you got to do is attach your ring gear to the locker that I give you, drill it out like I just showed you how, and then the rear end is only going to be different in that it has a lockout. So you just put the shaft in after you drill it out, put this bearing on, grease this bearing, 
and then you're going to take your lock out and you put your lock out on. Okay, I'm not going to go in there and over and, and pound the shaft in again, but put this on and then same thing, right? You're just going to want to check your screw size, check your screw size. Just put your screws in here, put your screws in here. Pretty much done. Put your hub on. Put your hub on, put your wheel on, done. So what I've just shown you is how easy this is to install these shafts. I don't think anybody can, can disagree that that's easy. You drill the tubes slightly bigger. You don't even go that big. Uh, what are we talking about? 30 thousandths or whatever it was. It's a super easy mod. Now, if you have the other type of housings that don't have the slip-on lockouts, uh, they have like a C-clip that holds the axle shaft in, it's a whole different story. you got to do some machining. Um, either you're going to be able to figure that out on your own or send me the tubes and I can modify those for you real quick. Uh, I can modify the tubes for 25 bucks, so no big deal. And then you don't even have to drill them out. You don't have to drill them out. I'll drill them out for you. I will uh, fix the bearings, which is the hard part, and then you're done. So send me the tubes, 25 bucks. You can do this mod uh, with no labor other than just assembly. So pretty easy stuff. So if you guys have questions, uh, hit me up. Uh, hopefully you can get into these axle shafts and not be so scared of them. I say, I mean, all you got to do is look at the look at the difference. I mean, the people take these axles and they bend them, they break them all day. I mean, people go through many sets of these. So with these shafts, still nobody's broken, bent, done anything to any of them. So hit me up with any questions or comments. Thanks, guys.